welcome to Virology Research Services, where we decode science and provide innovative solutions. Today, we will focus on a fundamental aspect of virology, virus quantification. When studying viruses, it's vital to assess not only how many viral particles are present, but also how many of them are capable of causing an infection. This distinction is made through two primary measurements. Infectious titer refers to the number of viruses capable of infecting cells and causing an infection. It's a direct indicator of the virus's potential to propagate and cause disease. Total virus titer accounts for all viral particles present, whether they're infectious or not. This broader measurement provides a comprehensive overview of the viral load, encompassing both active and inactive forms. Let's start by discussing the infectious titer, essential in research and vaccine development. By measuring how many viruses in a sample can infect cells, scientists can study viral replication, pathogenicity, and infection mechanisms. This is essential for developing live attenuated vaccines, ensuring that sufficient infectious particles trigger a strong immune response without causing illness. In antiviral testing, infectious titer helps assess a compound's effectiveness by comparing virus levels before and after treatment. On the other hand, the total virus titer is particularly important in diagnostics and epidemiological studies. In diagnostic settings, the main objective is to determine the presence or absence of a virus. For example, PCR-based diagnostics detect viral genetic material from both infectious and non-infectious particles. Let's now explore the techniques used to determine both infectious and total virus titers. The plaque assay, a method where viral infection causes visible damage to the cells and forms plaques, allows for the quantification of infectious viral particles. This assay is ideal for cytopathic viruses that exhibit fairly rapid growth, such as vaccinia virus and herpes simplex virus 1. While the plaque assay is inexpensive and easy to perform, it requires the virus to cause visible plaques, which isn't the case for all viruses. It is also low throughput and requires a perfect cell monolayer. You can watch our video on the plaque assay for more detailed information. The focus-forming assay is especially useful for non-cytopathic viruses that don't form clear plaques or those that spread slowly, like the dengue virus. Unlike the plaque assay, this method uses immunostaining to detect foci or clusters of infected cells, making it both faster and more sensitive. The focus-forming assay offers several advantages. It is highly accurate providing reliable counts over multiple dilutions, is rapid compared to traditional plaque assays, and is essential for non-cytopathic viruses that do not cause visible plaques. However, it has low throughput, requires a nearly perfect cell monolayer, and is expensive and laborious due to the immunostaining process. The TCID-50 assay is a method used to quantify viruses by measuring their ability to cause cell death, which results in the wells of a cell culture plate turning white. It is suitable for cytopathic viruses with fairly rapid growth, such as influenza or SARS-CoV-2. This assay is high throughput, simple, and cost-effective, but it provides delayed and less precise quantification compared to other methods. We have a dedicated video on the TCID-50 assay, so feel free to check it out if you'd like to learn more. Now, let's look at methods for determining the total virus titer, which includes both infectious and non-infectious particles. QRT-PCR quantifies viral genomes with high sensitivity, giving an accurate measure of total viral RNA or DNA. Particle counters determine the size and concentration of virus-like particles in a sample. Electron microscopy provides direct visualization of viral particles, confirming their morphology. Finally, 
The hemagglutination assay, used mainly for influenza, measures the virus's ability to bind red blood cells, estimating total viral particles. In summary, accurately measuring both infectious and total virus titers is crucial for advancing virology research and improving diagnostics. Each assay we've discussed offers unique benefits tailored to specific viruses and research needs. To further explore these methods, you can watch our assay-specific videos that go into the fine detail. We hope you found this video helpful, and as always, best of luck at the bench.